What can define an era more than its music and the way it was listened to? Mark Karuna, publisher and editor of the Antique Phonograph News, joined me for a walk through Dominic DiBernardo's amazing collection of sound and music delivery systems. I mean, I walked in the door, my jaw hit the floor. I mean, I've never seen this much uh, recording equipment, phonographs, discs in my life. It's awesome. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> can you give me a bit of a tour? Well, of course. We can start uh, from here. I mean, where do you start like? with this yes. much great stuff? Yeah. Uh, these are music boxes which uh, precede the phonograph um, uh, from 1850 to 1900. Okay. Uh, and there's um, a metal cylinder, a brass cylinder with all oh, these look pins. At that. And they generally play from three to 12 tunes per program. And that's the song was handwritten. Uh, this uh, box uh, was made about 1865. It has a brass cylinder just like the other one, but it also has bells and a drum, and we'll wind it with a lever. I can sing you tender songs of love. I can give you merry tales and joy and laughter. These are coin-operated phonographs. Uh, these two are made by Edison. You would find them on a uh, general store, and they will have the title of the song at this uh, label here. And they would change the title of the song every week, or once a week, and the people will come in and play and listen to the songs. So, like, these were the earliest jukeboxes, weren't they? Yeah, and what you have to keep in mind is when these came out, um, most people hadn't heard uh, large concert bands and good quality singers. So they would put their nickel in there, and some people would be the first time they've ever actually heard some of these songs performed by larger bands. And these are, um, you know, a type of uh, listening tube. Some of them just have little ends that you put in your ear, and some go right over your ears. Wow, that's fascinating. Uh, this is a, um, a Regina hexaphone. It, has, it plays six cylinders. It's played with a nickel. You would choose the song, and then you would wind it, and that brings the carriage back. And then um, around the turn of the century, around 1900, the uh, disc machine started to uh, come into its own. And here's an early disc. They were uh, seven inch records and had music on only one side at that time. And this is the machine that most people will recognize as uh, the most prominent disc machine. It's the one that was immortalized in uh, the His Master's Voice painting with Nipper the Dog and the Berliner Gramophone. As the uh, technology evolved, they went to an inside horn machine so that it, it, it concealed the horn a bit because uh, people found the horn a little bit obtrusive in their uh, houses. So they went to machines that fit in more like a piece of furniture. And once the uh, disc record technology was perfected and people started getting these machines in their homes, uh, we, it evolved into the 78 record, which you see a lot at antique shows. And that's when, you know, in the 20s, the whole era of recording music really started. You got big bands and the introduction of jazz. So it's a really highly collectible uh, area, uh, the 78s from, from the 20s and the 30s, and even up to Elvis, who uh, recorded on 78s up until the late 50s, and then we got into vinyl, and that's like a whole different era. I mean, you have so many unusual pieces in here. Um, I'm going to have to wonder about this lamp. Yes. Well, this is a lamp, but it's a phonograph lamp. It's um, a floor model made by the Capitol uh, Phonograph <laughs> Company in Chicago. Yeah, you open it. it. They all have silk shades, and uh, they have, there's two light, there are two light bulbs under here, two on top, and you play the record with an electric motor. And it goes into a tone arm down the pipe, and the sound comes out the bottom. That's the horn down there. <laughs> okay, the horn yeah. is the bass. Yeah, it's very well disguised. That's it? so clever. And How then, popular were these? These were very popular, especially the table model ones that you use as a piece of furniture type of thing or dress up a living room. Or... I see you've got some dolls here. I didn't know you were a doll collector. No, I'm not, but I'm a music collector and a photograph collector. These are musical doll music dolls, and they each play a small cylinder. This is the earliest one, which was made by Edison. It's an Edison doll made in 1894. They're very short. They're all, they all play nursery rhymes. <laughs> in the That's got to be exceptionally rare. They are very rare, yes, especially the Edison doll, because they were, most of them were destroyed. They were not selling well, so they were all recalled and they're all destroyed about in 1898 or so. Why do you think you keep doing this? Well, for me, it's, uh, I work every day, and then I come home at night, and uh, 
and it gives me pleasure either to come here and look at my photographs or play some of them sometimes or do some repairs and so on. And it keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make them like that anymore. <laughs>